Hi, love, light, and blessings. This is Shamanic Awa Priestess here, and I'm making a video today entitled What Um What Is Hoodoo? So Hoodoo, what is it? And this is gonna be episode one of my ATR series, African Traditional Religious Series. Now I want to make a disclaimer before I start this video. I love sharing ideas. I welcome comments, feedbacks, questions. That's what I strive for in this channel. That's what I want. However, racist remarks, nastiness, and all that kind of stuff, as in any video that I make, will be deleted. And if it's to a certain extent, those people will be blocked from the channel, like their comments and things like that. I just wanted to kind of put that disclaimer out there first. Um, for the most part, for the most part, um, I do get beautiful comments, but you always have those people that go on people's channels and troll and this kind of stuff. So I'm just letting you know, I don't feed trolls. So just kind of getting that out there. Another disclaimer is I do not, I do not proclaim myself to be a expert, a guru, a know everything about this topic as well. I'm going to share from my own experiences and from a lot of research that I've done over the years. And I'm also going to reference books if you would like to study and evolve and further extend or expand your knowledge of this practice, um, I will be more than glad to link some, put some books, the books and stuff where I got my research from and things like that. And um, you can do further research on your own and things of that nature. Okay. So who do, what is it? So let's take it back in history, okay? So Hudu comes from West the West African dysphoria. So basically, Hudu comes from the United States, but it comes from the descendants of West Africans that were brought here through the transatlantic slave trade. A lot of these ancestors were from the Congos, they were also from Benin and Togo, Nigeria, and other various tribes of Africa. Okay. Um, hoodoo is different because the thing about hoodoo is it's not a written practice. Some people say it's a religion. Some people say it's a practice. I'll let you determine what you think it is. In my opinion, to me, it's kind of a religious practice. But that's just my opinion. You know, everybody has their own interpretation of what they want to call it. I'm just going to call it African traditional religion and keep it simple. Okay. So um, depending on what part of the United States you were in, so we know that slavery in the United States was mostly prone to the South. Okay. So Hulu was mostly practiced in the South. But it also depends what part of the South would be the form of Hulu you would practice because there's more than one form of Hulu. And what I mean by that is Hulu is different and was practiced differently in Louisiana where the population was more mixed and diverse. So we had more of uh, Native American influence, uh, Jewish influences. Um, and also remember as well that in New Orleans, there's more Roman Catholicism that was practiced there. Therefore, they were able to synchronize uh, the, the, the saints with either Loas or the Orishas. Or in some Louisiana Voodoo practices, um, they were able to incorporate both. So hoodoo and voodoo in Louisiana kind of go hand in hand, even though there's differences in them. Um, there's a lot of hoodoo influences in Louisiana voodoo. And hoodoo also in Louisiana and certain southern, southeastern states did incorporate the Loas and the Odishas in their practices. However, that was not the same for everybody. Because in a lot of the South, you have to remember, um, it depends who the owner of that of those people were. So if they were a Protestant family, there were no saints. So therefore, the laws and the Orishas got lost over time. So they were not able to carry on those traditions, nor were they able to synchronize those uh, spirits, those African deities um, with the saints. So instead... Um, they only had, they only used what was available to them. So in this instances, what they did was first and foremost, of course, it was always practiced in secrecy, but 
um, they actually incorporated more of the Bible. So that's where the Bible magic comes from that a lot of people talk about. That is a basic component and foundation of traditional hoodoo. The Bible in hoodoo is everything because the Bible is believed to be a book of spells. So instead of incorporating the loas and the orishas, they were they would look at people, for instance, like Moses. Moses and a lot of Hulu practitioners was believed to be of African descendancy. They believed in a supreme being, a supreme God. There was um for the most part in a lot of African tribes, and they brought that over when they started practicing Hoodoo, um, that God was neither male or female. God was genderless, and God was neither good nor evil. God just was, and God didn't um like God didn't bother with humans. Not that God didn't care, but God was like too busy trying to keep the world running. So there were certain spirits and certain deities that were assigned to help us, which is the basic foundation of spiritualities like Santeria and Voodoo and things like that. Okay. It's also a basic foundation of hoodoo. Um, the, the, the biggest, most powerful hoodoo practitioner was believed to be almighty creator, God. Um, they would reference things like, you know, creator made the world in six days. To them, it was like when God was ordering all the things to be created in the world, it was like he was doing six days of spells. You know what I mean? So it's like the Bible was a book of spells. The Bible is believed to be a book of spells. So therefore, the books like the book of Moses, the book of Psalms, so Psalm magics, um, the book of songs and things like that, certain books in the Bible were considered to actually be... Um, spells so in other words they were used in spells back then that's what they were using they were using the bible for spells they were encanting they were reciting psalms over spells okay um they could date back this practice into the 1800s okay the word hoodoo okay itself um it's actually h-u-d-u -U, hoodoo and we spell it now with two h-o-o-d O O is the way modern people spell it now, but they used to call it hoodoo, H U D U, which comes from uh, the U people, which is descendants of the Togo and Ghana tribes, and it was actually the name of the language that was spoken at the time. So hoodoo was actually the name of a language, and that transformed into what modern people call now, like I hoodoo you, I did woo work on you, and that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, hoodoo also consisted of, remember, they use what they had. So they, 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 our ancestors just being enslaved, right? Being brought into the new world. They learned about the herbs. Remember who was here be, when, before we got colonized and brought over here, the Native Americans were here. So when people were running away and stuff like that, Remember, these were new herbs that these West African people were not exposed to, right? Because they come from other countries and other places. You know, Africa has different herbs and different trees and different things, right? So Native Americans did share their knowledge of like the local herbs and things like that because there were times the Native Americans did help in um, the Underground Railroad and things like that. And, you know, Quakers and there were people that were helping um, African Americans escape slavery, you know? Um, yes, they were Native Americans that also did own slaves. There were also people of color and mixed race people that owned slaves as well. I, I'm aware of that, but that was very few. That was not a big thing. Mostly we were owned by Europeans. Okay. So in hoodoo practices, they use what they had. Candles did not come into the equation until after the Civil War and after the slaves were emancipated. So modern day hoodoo um, candle work and all that stuff that was later on. So I'm talking about slavery. Like when they would say, um, who came from slavery, these are the things they use then before candle magic, because remember they had no access to that. These were people that were considered property. These were people that had no rights over their own body. These are people that, you know, were basically treated like animals and cattle. And so they did not have access to the pretty candles that we have today or color candles or any of those kinds of things. They had access to what? The Bible, because a lot of them were, they were trying to ingrain Christianity into them to keep them oppressed. This is not because I'm, I'm, I'm condemning Christianity. I'm just saying this is historically, this is a historic fact, right? So they used whatever they had 
around them. So things like herbs, when they started to learn what the herbs were, okay, so you had your herbs, you have, they were using minerals, they were using animal parts because they had access to animals. So animal skulls, animal bones, um, you know, there's, there's hoodoo things that people may use a, a crab claw, um, rabbit's foot, um, alligator parts, you know, whatever they had accessible to them. You know what I mean? Um, they also use human bodily fluids. There's many hoodoo um, rituals that will use a person's saliva, hair, um, semen, uh, vaginal secretions, urine, saliva. I mean, just everything. So they used whatever they could. Um, you have jar spells. You have, you know... And another big thing that they practice in Hoodoo too, um, a lot of, there's a lot of spells that were done with kerosene lamps, which are called spiritual lamps, um, a metal can that, you know, oil lamps, they will create oil, homemade oil lamps and things like that, right? So sometimes the masters didn't even know there was an actual spell in their kerosene lamps because they will put certain curios and herbs in it that look like nothing was happening in there, right? Um, they used a lot of uh, paper, paper bag, you know, like whatever was accessible to them, that's what they used. So a lot of sigils and symbolism, because remember, not everybody was literate. And because a lot of people couldn't read, a lot of these traditions were passed down orally. Okay. They did have a reverence for the ancestors, which in Africa, that is a very big thing. In a lot of indigenous cultures, such as Native American culture and things of that nature, so they did contact their ancestors, okay? They did have spiritual vigils. So there was, spiritualism was practiced in hoodoo, okay? Spiritualism was very practiced in hoodoo, okay? They would have maybe hidden altars and things of that nature. Um, they would make homemade powders, uh, mojo hands, oil, you know, oils if they had access to that, a homemade talisman, things like that. And again, practice in secrecy um, and things like that. Um, bottle trees also came from, uh, South Africa. There is practices like that still seen today in Haiti and some Afro-Caribbean, um, islands, which are bottles to catch spirits that dates back to South Africa and also has roots in hoodoo as well. Okay. Um, I am going to make a video on the differences between Louisiana voodoo and, and regular voodoo, which is, um, in Haiti. So, okay. So again, who do consist of oil lamps, powders, jars, a deck of cards, you know, you can do a lot with a deck of cards, psalms, papers, roots, minerals, animal bones, uh, bodily fluids. Like I said, it, who do in its sense, some people will say it's like folk magic. It is whatever you had on hand. Again, this was created by people that had no access, no money, to certain things so they used whatever they could they did a spell with whatever they were able to do after the emancipation and things like that um going now to the 1920s mid 1920s after the civil war then candles started to slowly get incorporated in hoodoo okay people started to have public spiritualist churches which were predominantly black okay and this origin, they say that this came from traditions like uh, in New Orleans. So as people started to migrate to other places, because remember, once people got emancipated, some of the slaves stayed on and became sharecroppers, and some of them moved either to the north or other southern places. So as people started to migrate, you know, with different um, African American people started influencing each other, and they start. They said that um, spiritualist vigil services or candle services. They had, they had seen in New Orleans, which had a lot of Roman Catholic influences, started to be practiced in other parts of the United States, such as Memphis, Georgia, and Chicago. Um, and they have a book on this called Legends of the Incense, Herb, and Oil Magic by Louis de Claremont. He had, that's one of his pen names, or also Godfrey Spencer. So some of these authors have uh, pseudonames, so you might find the book in more than one author, okay? Because these are like older books. All right, so you can look up more of that. And then um, Miss, then there was a, a Jewish owner of the, by the name of Mr. Young. And he owned a oracle company. Um, it nationally distributed oils and candles. 
to African American people. So he found a market to sell these things too, which consisted of menorah and uh, double action candles, like we call them that now, which were really Sabbath candles that they usually have more than one color. So when we see those dual action candles, that dates back to the 19, uh, mid 1920s and 1930s and 40s. Um, when they were ordering that from a catalog and they were using that. So that started to get incorporated into hoodoo traditions. Um, you can read about that as well in The Guiding Light to Power and Success by Michael Strabo. And another book too. Um, okay, so that's another book that it's good um, to read as well if you want further information on that. Um, there, so there was a black spiritualist church movement. It expanded all the way to New York City. And in a lot of black owned newspapers, African American owned newspapers, they promoted conjure work and candles and things like that. So you can order from the catalog. Our Zoni Hurston and Reverend Adele Clemens um, associated with the African American uh, ministers, altar services. In Harlem, they also had groups called the Color Spiritualist Association of Churches, the CSAS. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, during a lot of very racial tension times, um, the Black Spiritual Church actually was kicked out of the spiritualist movement when they started having a spiritualist movement. Um, so when like seances were becoming famous and things like that, um, they got kicked out of the movement. Um, this is based on a 1600, uh, interview they did in the 1930s with black workers and why they had to go underground because basically it was like once, uh, the churches were open to people like some, and this is not saying everybody does this. Some European people, European people came to the services and kind of learn some, how to do some things and then made their own movement and then kind of kicked them out. So it's like, basically, I got the knowledge that you're they're sharing with others. Now get out. So that is what that's really cultural appropriation. There's a difference between a cultural appropriation and culture appreciation. There's nothing wrong with appreciating somebody's culture and giving them credit where the idea came from. Another thing is to actually take they literally took these practices and kicked the original people. Remember, these practices predate the civil war these practices date back all the way up to what they could historically trace 1800s so during slavery okay and 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 then after that and so they took these remedies and all these things and literally kicked these black ministers out of the spiritualist church and um basically formed their own um associations so the african-american spiritualist association was expelled from the spiritualist church okay and, um, but they continue to practice, um, spiritualist mediumship with candle, uh, ministries and things like that, but it was more underground and you can read more about that. Um, the book is called Mule and Mule and Men by Zora Neil Houston. Okay. Um, and who do conjure witchcraft root work by Harry Middleton Hyatt. Okay, and The Spirit of the Black Hawk by Jason Jason Benny and Spirit World by Michael Smith. Okay. So you can get more information about the about what I just talked about. As is like, you know, I it's a lot to talk about. Um, and I can't only cover but so much in this video. So the Spiritualist Churches of New Orleans also is another book you can read. It's by Claude F. Jacobs and Andrew J. Caslo and Black Magic by Yvonne Cheru. Okay. Um, there was a, um, in ni about 1942, there was somebody under the pen name of Henry Gabaco and Joseph. Uh, but he was saying, he wrote a book called The Master of Book of Candle Burning. And he, he was like, I'm Creole and I'm a Southern Hulu worker. And he combined like, um, Jamaican Obadea, I think that's how you pronounce it, Christianity, Jewish Kabbalism and spiritualism. And also the, uh, book of Moses, eighth, ninth and 10th book of Moses, um, which are like the lost books. 
And he was like, yeah, I'm African-American descent. I'm a great voodoo practitioner of the Bible and all this kind of stuff. Because that's what uh, Moses is believed to be practicing. This person correlated themselves to that. It was later found out that he was a white Jewish person. And his daughter said that she wrote the books for her father as he dictated them to her. So he was not of African or Creole descent when he wrote that book. So as what I was talking about before, like... um. After a while, hoodoo started to become bastardized. Um, people started meshing it to what they wanted it to be. Because like I said, that kind of started in the 1920s, like late 1920s, 1930s, um, into the 40s when they started expelling the um, black spiritualist church from the actual movement. Um, and Ariva is another author. She practices Southern Conjure and Spiritual Church. And she bought the new age and she's around the 1980s. Okay. So then, okay. So then I have questions like, all right, that's good and everything. But like, why do I see like, uh, who do practitioners now? They, they use saint candles and things like that. Again, that has been practiced before this, what I'm going to mention, but it depends what part of the South, because like I said, Louisiana, it's its own thing. And yes, there was slave there, slavery there, but people were allowed to practice a little bit more because they had Roman cat they were it was it was like easier and that's kind of using the word not the best either to synchronize the the African deities into the saints there whereas other parts of the south that wasn't so easy like I said because with Protestants there aren't any saints really so it's like you can't do that so like I said then they started more with the ancestors and things like that but in the 19 mid 1940s we had an influx in the United States of migrants that came, such as Puerto Ricans, Operation Bootstrap. They practice a piritismo, which does incorporate saints and things like that, and sometimes even orishas or loas and things like that as well. So, um, into the saints. And so they started coming here, which again, people from the Caribbean are Afro-Caribbean mostly. Um, they do have African roots and they also had slaves, but again, their slavery was Spanish. So they had more access to Roman Catholicism and were able to better synchronize the spirits with the saints. So they brought their practices here. And again, when people start to be exposed to each other, some people incorporated that into their practice. Others did not, but it wasn't until the 1970s that the saints were mainstream and magical stores and spiritual shops that people of African-American descent here in the United States, I'm not saying they didn't do this before then, but the majority of people started to actually incorporate more saints in the 70s, between the 1970s and the 1990s, which changed and evolved hoodoo to more of what hoodoo is now. Okay. Um, so that's basically what I wanted to share about hoodoo. Hoodoo has evolved over time. Uh, again, like I said, then um, there always been spirit lamps. Then from spirit lamps, which I, I still make spirit lamps, and I still practice traditional hoodoo, but there are candles. Like I use that as well. That's, you know, something that's very available to me. So I do use that as well. But I recognize that that is a more of a modern practice now with the color candles and things of that nature. Um, you know, so I, but the basic foundation of if someone says I am a hoodoo practitioner is the Bible. The Bible is the book of spells, the Bible and the reverence and the honoring of the ancestors. Ancestors are important because it is believed that the work is done through them. There is no karma in hoodoo because it is not believed that God is good nor evil. Basically, if you are justified in what you do, nothing is going to happen to you. So that do no harm does not pertain to hoodoo. That is something that's new age, and that is not the basic foundation of hoodoo. There is no karma in hoodoo. They do not believe in that. You do what you have to do. There is a dark and a light side to everything. And we are in a hoodoo root worker is the person that's believed to bring balance into the world. And if something's justified, nothing's going to happen. But know that if you're doing something and it's not justified, that person has the right to defend themselves and you're going to get back. Like if they reverse the spell on you, you're going to get it back tenfold and so on and so forth. Right. But that is not karma. That is because you're just going around hurting people for no reason. That happens in real life too. You're just going to go up and punch somebody in the face. There's, there's, there's going to be retribution for that. 
versus somebody who's defending themselves because somebody punched them in the face or somebody's hurting them and their life is in danger. You're trying to defend yourself. So there is an order to hoodoo, but you not, not, do not necessarily need, need to be initiated into hoodoo. And I know nowadays, like a lot of people from different cultures practice hoodoo um, and things like that. But I just wanted to let this video know that that actually has African-American roots and tradition and was created by West Africans that came here to this country, not of their free will, because you always have to give credit where credit's due. A lot of the spiritualist black uh, spiritualist movements can be dated back to black African-Americans that also um, gave a lot in the spiritualist movement as well. Okay, so much love, light, and blessings. Thank you so much for watching this video. And until the next video, guys, if you have any questions, please like and subscribe. Love you. Bye.